Even in this day and age when filmmakers can create entire worlds with CGI, there's nothing quite like a practical, good old-fashioned stunt. Talented stunt performers risk their lives to get the shots that often wind up being the highlight of the entire movie. While correctly executing a stunt rides a fine line between success and disaster, stunt performers don't always pull off the moment exactly as planned. Nevertheless, the cameras are rolling and sometimes the footage captured is so exciting that filmmakers simply have to keep it in the final cut. Or the stunt ended in actual pain and misery, so more takes weren't possible. Here are some really scary movie moments where the fear and danger were real. Die Hard Part of the charm of Die Hard and what makes it such a classic is its premise. John McClane is a regular cop rising to the occasion to thwart a massive terrorist plot. In real life, Bruce Willis was also basically a regular guy, not yet an action movie stud, best known as the star of the romantic comedy TV series Moonlighting. Don't just sit there like a plate full of refried beans! Vacation doesn't end, it just changes location! Thanks to Die Hard's action-packed set pieces, stuntmen had to shoulder a lot of the work. But things didn't always go as planned. One such moment happened during the scene where McClane leaps across an elevator shaft. Willis's stunt double was supposed to grab onto a vent, but his hands slipped and he kept falling down the shaft. The editor decided to keep that shot in the film, and it works in all kinds of ways. It makes the viewer jump a little, but it also speaks to McLean's character. He's just a normal guy screwing up a little when he's trying to save the day. I know what a TV dinner feels like. Back to the Future Part 2 in one of the most crowd-pleasing scenes in Back to the Future Part 2, four members of Griff's gang chase Marty on hoverboards and end up crashing through the glass front of the famous Hill Valley Courthouse. <laughs> As the stunt was planned, all four stunt performers were going to be outfitted in harnesses and suspended from a crane, which would provide enough momentum to send them crashing through the glass windows. Then, a crew member was supposed to press a button on a remote control, sending them descending to the safety of airbags below. The cameras rolled, and the stunt performers flew through the air. But stuntwoman Cheryl Wheeler's rig didn't work correctly. She flew off course, and instead of bursting through a candy glass window, she hit a pillar on the outside of the building. Adding injury to injury, the crew member then remotely released her, sending her crashing 25 feet onto concrete. Wheeler was severely injured and sued the studio, but nevertheless, the accident footage is in the film. When the gang crashes through the glass windows, Wheeler is visible falling onto the sidewalk. First Blood the action in First Blood, the first in Sylvester Stallone's Rambo franchise, is so raw and visceral that it's sometimes difficult to watch. Stallone plays a Vietnam vet who gets caught in a war with a small-town police department. I didn't come here to rescue Rambo from you. I came here to rescue you from him. One scene in particular looks like it must have been painful for Stallone to shoot, and that's because it was. While on the run from the military officers charged with capturing and quelling him, Rambo jumps off a cliff and falls through some trees, coming up hard against some branches. Stallone performed one take of the scene and then dutifully did one more. The director requested another, but Stallone politely declined. Turns out he'd broken a rib on the second take, leading to some very real cries of anguish. Maze Runner – The Death Cure Dylan O'Brien made a name for himself with The Maze Runner, a trilogy of sci-fi films based on the popular series of dystopian young adult novels. The actor happily did his own stunts for the films, but on the third day of filming the third entry, The Death Cure, a scene involving a car went wrong. O'Brien suffered a concussion, a facial fracture, and brain trauma. Production shut down for months while he recovered. When O'Brien returned, director Wes Ball had a delicate question for him. Would it be alright to use some of the footage from that disastrous day in the film? Speaking to USA Today, Today, O'Brien recalled, My response was actually like, I need you to in a way. I would be more heartbroken than if it just went to waste. While the injury itself stayed off the silver screen, nobody can deny that O'Brien turned in some breathtaking stunt work that day. The Wizard of Oz the Wizard of Oz is full of dazzling moments, and one of the biggest comes shortly after Dorothy arrives in the merry old land of Oz, specifically Munchkinland. Margaret Hamilton, in an unbridled performance as the Wicked Witch of the West, was supposed to disappear into thin air thanks to some obscuring smoke and pyrotechnics, as well as a well-placed trap door. <laughs> Ah! 
But when cameras were rolling, the door didn't work properly, meaning Hamilton literally faced a bunch of fireworks. She endured such severe burns to her face and hands that she needed six weeks to recover. Even then, she had to wear green gloves on her hands because her skin was still too tender for makeup. At the very least, director Victor Fleming told Hamilton that they didn't need to reshoot the Munchkinland exit scene. The one that led to her injuries looked just fine.